Hi, I'm uh, Patrick Conway. It's a pleasure to be here today. I'm the CMS Chief Medical Officer and Deputy Administrator for Innovation and Quality at CMS. So that means I'm in charge of all our quality and value-based purchasing programs as, as well as our innovation center programs. I am a practicing physician. I'll be working this weekend in the hospital at Children's National Medical Center um, and have a background in quality improvement and transformation. So I want to frame this up briefly at a high level, talk about some of our innovation center models, and then end on cancer care. So first, if you think about the Affordable Care Act, essentially two major parts. One, expansive insurance with Medicaid uh, and marketplace expansion. Two, delivery system reform, which I'll talk about. And I think, and I, don't, I would argue in the U.S. we haven't talked enough about the second part, which I would say is, is at least as important as the first part. Um, and we're really focused on better health care outcomes, better quality, and lower costs for all Americans. Um, as part of that, there's a number of levers, value-based purchasing, transparency, et cetera. The Innovation Center, which I'll talk about today, was $10 billion over 10 years focused on testing new payment and service delivery models for Medicare, Medicaid, and CHIP beneficiaries. Um, so to date, um, we've launched over 20 models. The goal of all these models is to improve quality and lower cost. And the beauty of the legislation is if we achieve that, if we improve quality and lower costs, and I'm going to share some results today, we're actually able to scale that program up, up to nationally uh, and permanently through rulemaking um, to benefit beneficiaries. Um, so a few of the major models we've launched so far that I'll talk briefly about, one, accountable care organizations. So these are entities that step forward, said, I want to manage a whole population of patients. I can achieve better health care quality at lower cost for a population. A few results there, over 350 ACOs now, serving over 5 million Medicare beneficiaries. MedPAC actually talks about it as a core part of the CMS programs already. Um, and the results, over $280 million of savings uh, in the first year. And on the quality results, the Pioneer ACOs outperform quality benchmarks on 15 out of 15 quality measures and 4 out of 4 patient experience measures. So really strong results from the ACO program. I get quarterly results on all these uh, programs. I can never share the exact details, but I can tell you I've already looked at the Pioneer second year results, and we're highly likely to have positive results in the second year as well. Um, on the bundles initiative, which is, is relevant to oncology as well, uh, to give you one example, we have a, a bundles pilot where we're bundling acute and post-acute care. Uh, so for example, for an orthopedic procedure, bundling acute and post-acute care uh, for a 90-day episode, goal lowering, uh, qual improving quality and lowering cost. This initiative has over 5,000 providers now that are, whether they're hospitals, physician groups, post-acute care facilities, that think we can lower uh, cost and improve quality. I just got the first quarter results from those that are in two-sided risk. Once again, positive. Quality results look good. Uh, cost savings as well. Um, the last major model I'll talk about before I go to oncology, primary care medical homes. Um, we've got a number of, of different models. Tell you about one, comprehensive primary care initiative. Well, we worked with private payers. We aligned on a common set of quality measures, uh, and we said we're going to transition the way we pay for primary care. So we are all, all the payers, including CMS, Medicare, Medicaid, private payers, putting in per member per month fees into these practices, moving them away from fee-for-service where they can manage patients the way that benefits the patient. Instead of forcing an office visit, they can manage with telemonitoring, they can manage with care managers. They really adjust their patient flow uh, to meet the patient's needs um, in that primary care medical home. Once again, quarterly results very good in this program, both in terms of quality and cost. Lastly, turning to oncology, and we've talked about this publicly, we're currently working on a model with, like, like all other models, we'll lead with quality get the right quality measures, get the right patient-centered uh, measures in place. And then we are highly likely to actually do almost a combination of what of a medical home and a bundles. Um, so on the medical home side, you can think about per member per month fees in oncology that support care coordination, uh, that support following pathways, that support shared decision-making with patients, for example. And on the bundles uh, side, as was m other speakers mentioned, having a bundled payment for an episode of care. So that care can be delivered in a way that is most cost efficient and highest quality for the patients. Um, we think there's huge potential here. There was a paper that I'm sure somebody already talked about that came out yesterday from United's experience showing major uh, cost savings and, and quality results. Um, so for Medicare, we hope uh, to also generate those results. And we hope to announce this model relatively soon. Um, and we do think the uh, pathway adherence and patient engagement portions of this are, are critical. 
So lastly, I'll just end uh, at a high level picture. Um, we're, we've been pushing hard over the last several years on delivery system transformation. I do think we're at a bit of a tipping point or dominoes falling, if you will. Um, you know, I shared, I shared uh, the ACO results, some of the model results, just at a high level cost growth, uh, lowest in the last four years and over 50 years. Some quality results, readmissions down from 20% to almost 17%. That's over 150,000 Medicare beneficiaries staying home and healthy. Patient safety in this country, there's something called an ARC national scorecard. Harm had always gone up in hospitals. The last two years has gone down almost 10%. That's actually over 15,000 lives saved, over 540,000 adverse events to patients avoided, whether they be infections or adverse drug events, and over $4 billion in cost savings. And I think the message is we're making investments in quality improvement, and at the same time, we're aligning incentives with what's best for patients. So I want to thank you for having me here today. I think in oncology care, we have a real opportunity to achieve those better health care outcomes, higher quality care, patient-centered care at lower cost. Thank you very much.